فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The example for this is that he was one time invited by one of his students one of his students he called the sheikh rahimahullah to come over and to eat at his house and he said to him I want you to come to my place at one o'clock so the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala he came and when he came he came 15 minutes early and the Shaykh he stayed in his car he did not come out and when it became one o'clock sharp he came and he locked the door the Shaykh didn't speak about the issue and the student some of the students who were with the Shaykh who were with him had informed the one who invited the Shaykh that the Shaykh was 15 minutes outside and he never came and knocked the door so he went to the Shaykh and he said why didn't you come and knock the door and then he said to him because before the time is as bad as after the time to come early is as bad as to come after the reason is because you're busy preparing yourself you're busy preparing yourself you're also busy in organizing for the guest he was like that rahimahullah he was also well known for his al-hirsu ala al-awqati wa ikhtilamiha the shaykh used to benefit from his time he would not let his time go by without a purpose and a goal behind it. Not even a split second. Sheikh Nasir had one of the things that he was well known for is his time. But in that case, his students, if they came in and the Sheikh Rahimullah he was in his maktab, the Sheikh used to wear glasses. Uh, he would carry on reading. And he would carry on reading. He would look at the person from underneath his eyes, underneath his glasses. He would look at them like this. He says, is, do, is there any questions that you have? The person says, yes, I have questions. He says, hey, ask. Once he finishes the question, if Sheikh Nasr put his head down to his book, it meant the time is over. The time is over, you now can go. Sometimes he would say it to the person if he didn't understand. He would say, in sorry for. Now you can go, inshallah. And if it was from his closest students, he would what? If it was from his closest students, he would, rahimahullah ta'ala, they would know that. And if he put his head back to the book, it was a, a very polite way of him saying to them, it's time for you to go. If the Sheikh, rahimahullah, was driving, from a destination to another place and somebody was with him he would not let, the, let them just spend the time speaking he would say if any one of you has a question let's ask you can ask benefit from this opportunity and he would teach his students to value every minute of making it a moment of benefit for themselves the Shaykh rahimahullah he was al-amalu bil-ilm implementation of the knowledge he wasn't a person who took all of those ahadiths uh, without implementing them. He was very well known for his implementation of the knowledge. Sheikh Nasr, as you all know, he passed 80 years of age. He passed. 80. He died at 84, 85, whatever. But the Sheikh Rahimullah will still fast. He will start fast Mondays and Thursdays. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, some of the students, they said that we were, we were shab, we were young youths. And we wouldn't fast, some of us. And the Shaykh would say to them, I am fasting, and I'm older than you, I'm 80, and you guys are young, he would say to them. And one of the things that he said to them one time was, ala nafsi, I have made a covenant with myself, a promise. Allah that my speech does not oppose my actions. 
And he said, وَاسْتَفَدْتُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ قَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ اللَّهِ شُعَيْبٍ And he said, I benefited this from Nabi Allah Shu'ib. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ I do not want to oppose you. I mean, I do not want to oppose what I prohibit from you guys. I, mean, I do not want to tell you guys to leave off something. And then I come and then I do it. The Shaykh, rahimahullah, he never ever taught his students a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, except that he what, except that he would do it. He would call them to something, and he was the first who would do it. To the extent one day the Shaykh was given a lesson, and a police officer came in, and the police officer wanted to pray the salah without a sutra. And so the Shaykh said, Ya Shurtiyu, O police officer, istatir, place a sutra. Place a sutra. So the police officer, he went forward and placed a sutra. And when he finished the prayer, he came to the Shaykh and he said to him, Jazakallahu khayran. May Allah reward you for what you have brought to my attention. That's what type of person he was. He also had as a character al-hikmatu fin nasiha. He was very wise in how he would give the advice and how he would speak to the people. Even though he get the point across, Shaykh Nasir, but he was wise in how he dealt with matters. And he would place people in their places. كَانَ يُنزِلُ النَّاسَ مَنَازِلَهُمْ And place the people in their, in their positions Allah placed in them. One time his student, Aba Islam, who died recently, Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'a, he mentions that, he said that Shaykh Nasir Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one day he said he came to one of my khutbas. And he said, I didn't know he was there. I used to do khutbas. And Shaykh Nasir was there in the crowd. He would listen to the khutbah. He said, I didn't know he was in the crowd. I wasn't aware of it. And he said, on the pulpit, by accident, slip of a tongue, I mentioned a narration which was weak. And then he said, when the prayer finished, I was shocked that Shaykh Al-Bani was there. And he said to me, Ya Aba Islam, Abu Islam, come and visit me, inshallah, in my house. So he said, I came and I visited him and I sat in his house. And other students were there as well. They were asking him questions and they were speaking to him. And he was responding to them. And then he said to me, Aba Islam, kada wa kada. You mentioned this, this, this in your khutbah. Wa ana la alamu alayha dalilan. I have no evidence for that personally. Me, Sheikh Al-Bani. a'lamtana. Why don't you teach us, educate us? Ya Aba Islam, Why don't you educate us and teach us as evidence? so we can benefit from you. Allahu Akbar. That's what he said to him. Alayhi rahmatullah. Why don't you give us the evidence for it so we can benefit from you? Wallahi, that's something one person should look at. And observe. And to be honest, this kind of statement right now may not feel big to some of you guys, but I remember one time I quoted a reference and I attributed it by accident to Al-Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And the statement was said by who? Ibn Al-Qayyim. And I remember my teacher, when I was telling him that, he said, um, he said to me, I might be wrong, he said. Or he said, I think it might be Ibn Al-Qayyim. He, I don't know, was it how that, how is that, is, was it that way he said it or, it, the way he said it was really, really, sh it made me think, yeah, it was Ibn Al-Qayyim. I knew it was Ibn Al-Qayyim. As soon as he said it, I was like, yeah, you're right. I just remembered, it is him. But he told it to me in a way where he didn't, it wasn't Mwajah, it didn't feel like he came directly at me. He didn't also, uh, I didn't feel like he was correcting me. Are you with me? It was so humble, it was so easy, it was smooth, that I, would, I was like, 
Yeah, you're right, Sheikh, I'm wrong. I accepted it. And that's a hikmah in nasiha, correcting a person in a matter. So when this, the Sheikh said that to him, the student said to him, Ya Sheikh, ala, Sheikh, inno sabqu lisan. What I said on the pulpit was the slip of the tongue. I also don't have evidence for it. Look what the Sheikh said. Jazakallahu khayran. Arahtana. Jazakallahu khayran. You brought us comfort and relaxation. Waqassarta alayna tariq. And you made the road shorter for us. Other people, they waste your time and they say, yeah, they'll find something for it. I'll research, inshallah, I'll get back to you on this. I know there's something out there. And then you're, you're, huh, mu'allaka. Shaykh Nasir, he just said, MashaAllah, you made it easy for us. That this, it doesn't exist. Another example that Shaykh Nasir had was one time, one of his students, he said, Al Shaykh al Bani rahimahullah, called my house. And he said, I wasn't there. He said, my young daughter picked up. And when she picked up the phone, she said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So the Shaykh asked her, he said to her, is your father home? And she said to him, no, Shaykh. She said, no. He said to her, to the, his daughter, the daughter, tell your father that Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani called. He didn't say Sheikh. He didn't say Allama. He called himself Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani. That's who, that's who called. Then, when, he, when the student came home and he was informed that Sheikh Al-Bani called him, this is Sheikh Al-Bani, so he stood straight away called Sheikh Nasir. And he said, Sheikh, uh, may Allah bless you, I heard you called me. The Sheikh said to him, after they talked about what they wanted to talk about, this is showing you daqiq how Sheikh Nasir was. He said, your daughter, when she picked up the phone, and I spoke, I said to her, I picked up the phone. She responded, she's the one who picked up the phone, and she said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He said, is this something she's doing based on knowledge that you taught her? Or is she doing it because she's a young girl, it's a mistake that she came with? Why is it Sheikh Nasir picking up that, on that? Because the salam is not for the person who's picking up, it's wrong. When somebody calls you, you do not say assalamu alaikum. You pick your phone up by saying what? Naam. Yes. They have knocked on your door. They are the ones who came. They are the ones who have to say assalamu alaikum. Are you with me? That's the sunnah. Are you with me, brothers? Somebody comes to your house, you open the door, you say naam. They say assalamu alaikum. Because the ayah says, وَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا غَيْرَ بُيُوتِكُمْ حَتَّى تَسْتَعْنِسُوا وَتُسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا You take permission and you greet the people of the house. <coughs> Are you with me? So when you pick up the phone, what do you say? نعم. Are you with me? The person would say what to you? Salam alaikum. And then what do you say? وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ Are you with me? So he, picks up, he picked up on that. رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. That's to show you that he was not just a scholar alone. He was a murabbi. He was a nurturer. He was a cultivator. He cultivated the community he was from. He taught the people around him. He called them to the smallest of the sunnah. He didn't take anything insignificant. One of the things that Sheikh Nasir was very... He also had is a thabat ala manhaj. Sheikh Nasir was... Firm, steadfast, upright on the correct methodology. He always used to say, Alaykum bi thabati ala tawheed. Be steadfast upon tawheed. Hold on to the sunnah. Hold and tread on the path of the methodology and the path and the way of the companions. Ridwanullahi alayhi wa He used to repeat that many times. If you listen to his tapes, he always talks about that. And he always says the ayah. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَلَضُوا عَنْهُ And he would recite the ayah وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَمِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمُ 
على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة كلهم في النار إلا واحدة. The Sahabas they said, who is that saved one? Group? Who is that saved group that's going to make it to Jannah when all the other groups are going to go to the hellfire? The Prophet said, ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي. Anyone who is upon that which I and my companions are upon, that's the only people who are going to go to paradise. That's the people who are going to make it to paradise straight away. So Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah used to repeat this hadith a lot. He used to always say, Ad'iyaul manhaj kathir. The claimers of correct methodology are many. Many claim it. وَالَّذِينَ يَثْبُتُونَ عَلَيْهِ قَلِيلٍ but those who are firm upon it are little. And he said, وَسَتَعْرِفُ ذَلِكَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِي And you all will know that after my death. How many people? Wallahi is so true. Sometimes he used to say, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He used to say, لَيْلَةِ الظَّلْمَاءِ يُفْتَقَدُ الْبَدَرِ He used to say, the dark night People will know the value of the moon. The people will know the value of what they have when the moon goes. He used to always say as well, al to hirman. When you're with a people, it prevents them from seeing your value. You find the quality of something when you lose it. You realize what this person was doing for you and what they were holding from you. Rahimahullah. He used to say that. And when he died, it was true. Many people became clear to the people. They used to claim the love of the Shaykh. They used to claim that they were of his methodology. They used to deceive the people by rubbing on the Shaykh. You know, the Shaykh knows me and whatnot. But when the Shaykh, rahimahullah, died, and they knew they couldn't speak when the Shaykh was alive. They knew they couldn't respond to him. Because the Shaykh had the pen and the paper. And he had the knowledge. They were scared of him. But as soon as he died, they started to accuse him of irja. They started to accuse him of what they could accuse him of. Rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'ah. The Shaykh was very, very humble. And he used to teach his students to be humble. And one of the good examples of his humbleness and his was. He would sometimes go and visit after Salatul Fajr. He would go and visit. Are you with me? He would sometimes go to his students and he would visit them after Fajr. And he would buy gifts on the way. And he would go to give and he would knock on their houses and he would give it to them. And he would say to them, This is a gift. No one else is going to give you this gift except Sheikh Albani. No one else is going to give you this gift except Al-Bani. He would say that to them. Rahimahullah, this is his tawadu and his humility. Uh, meaning, he's saying that this cheap gift, no one else is going to give it to you except Al-Bani. This simple stuff, only Al-Bani is going to give it to you. He sometimes, if he saw his students in his gathering, and he saw that their facial expression wasn't good, and they felt a bit sad and depressed or pain, the Shaykh Rahimullah, from his busy time, he would call them, if that was what he was able to do, to play, bring comfort to their heart and to say to them, don't worry, inshaAllah ta'ala. And he would give them words of comfort. Comfort. The Shaykh was very, very patient in da'wah. Very, very patient. Whenever he would be told about uh, somebody who would wrong him, or he would be told, مثلاً, that he a calamity or something had, had been befallen him. The Shaykh would consistently and continuously say, حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل اللهم إني مظلوم فانتصر Oh Allah, I am oppressed. Give me victory. He would say that, رحمه الله تعالى. Shaykh Al-Bari was, without a doubt, he was a... He was a mountain. He was a shade for many. Many would shade him. And he was a mountain that no, nothing could move him. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'ah. 
No government backed him. And no, indiv no, no one financed him, gave him money. He was a one man. But he himself alone was a government. He himself alone was a leader. Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah ta'ala, the scholars, they praised him. Sheikh Ibn Baz said, Ma ra'aytu tahta adim is sama. I never saw anyone under the sky. Aliman bil hadithi, who is knowledgeable in hadith. In this era, at this time, مثل العلامة محمد ناصر الدين الألباني like Ibn Ubaid uh, like Albani I don't know anyone under the sky who is more knowledgeable in hadith than Albani رحمه الله one time Sheikh Ibn Ubaid was asked about the hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن الله يبعث لهذه الأمة الله will bring out for this أمة على رأس كل مئة سنة every hundred years Allah will bring a person who will revive the religion for the people. Who is this person? Al-Bani Ibn Baz was asked. And he said, Al-Shaykh Muhammad Nasiruddin Al-Albani. He is the one Allah brought out for this ummah to revive it. Huwa mujaddidu hadha al-asri fi dhanni. In my belief, he is the reviver of this time. Ibn Baz said this. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abbad, he said, Al-Bani, Rahimahullah is min al-ulama' al-afdhal. He's from the elite scholars. Al-ladheena afnaw a'marahum fi khidmati al-sunnati wa ta'lifi fiha. Who spent all of his life. All of his life. In the, working in the sunnah and working and authoring in this regard. Calling to the path of Allah. Giving victory to the aqeedah al-salafiyya. Fighting against innovation. Defending the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, وَهُوَ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْمُتَمَيِّزِينَ He is from the unique, noble scholars. And he said, his nobility has become famous amongst the general and the specific. And then he said, وَلَا شَكَّ without a doubt أَنَّ فَقْدَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْعَالِمِ Without a doubt, the losing of this individual, Sheikh Al-Bani, because this is what this, this statement Abdul Muhsin Abbad was saying when Albani died. He said, Louis of this scholar is from the Masaib al Kibar, is from the great calamities that has been fallen on this Ummah. And he said, Fajazahullah Khairan, may Allah reward him with good, with good, Allah Baqaddaba in that which he has put forward in the efforts that he has done. Sheikh ibn Uthaymin said about him, Fallahi Araftuhu, that which I know of him, Sheikh Albani. من خلال اجتماعي به when I met him وهو قليل was little that I met him شغل بلوتين بيسا I never met him much but the little, much, the little time I had they met each other only twice and he said those little times that they met he said إنه حريص جدا على عمل بالسنة this is what I, he said to him the little that I met him I came to know that he was a, he's an individual who strives hard to follow the sunnah وَمُحَارَبَةِ الْبِدْعَةِ To fight innovation. سَوَاءً كَانَ فِي الْعَقِيدَةِ Whether it be matters of aqeedah, أَمْ فِي الْعَمَلِ Or whether it be matters of fiqh. He said that's in terms of my meeting him. When I saw that, that's what I felt from him. He said, أَمَّا مِنْ خِلَالِ قِرَاءَةِ لِمُؤَلَّفَاتِ But he said, when I read his works, his books, فَقَدْ عَرَفْتُ عَنْهُ ذَلِكَ I came to realize what I saw from him in his works as well. وَأَنَّهُ ذُو عِلْمٍ جَمْ He's a man of great knowledge. In hadith. And then look what he said. Riwayatan wa dirayatan. His knowledge of hadith is in terms of narration and the fiqh of the hadith. Allahu Akbar. He said that. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin. Wa anna Allah ta'ala qad naf'a fi ma katabahu kathira min al-nas. And that which he has written, Allah has benefited many people with it. In terms of knowledge. Min haythu al-ilm. Wa min haythu al-minhaj. And in terms of methodology, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Sheikh Albani Rahimahullah, before he died, Rahmatan Wasi'a, he gave an advice, a farewell. And this is exactly what he said. He said, I advise my wife and my children and my friends 
and everybody who loves me, if my death reaches them, that they, they make for me an yad'u li bil maghfirati wal rahmah, that they ask for me forgiveness and mercy, first of all. And it said, wa alla yabku, and that they don't cry. In what? Like in ala niyahatin aw bisawtin murtafi'. They don't wail, basically. They don't scream about my death. This is to my wife. This is to my children. This is to my friends. This is also to those who love me. Don't scream when you hear of my death. He said, that's the first thing. The second wasiyah that I'm writing is, أَن يُعَجِّلُوا That they hasten my burial. And he said not to inform my family members and my brothers except if there is a need for them to partake in my burial. There's a need for them to come and do something. But if there's no need, don't waste time informing them. Hasten my burial to take me fast to my grave. And he said, I specifically want my washing to be done by Izzat, he said. Khadir, Abu Abdullah, he should do it. He's my neighbor and my friend who is sincere. And anyone who he chooses to, bury, uh, to wash me, he can use. It's up to him. Number three. I want to be buried in the closest place. Why? لِكَيْ لَا يَضُرَّ مَنْ يَحْمِلُ جَنَازَتِي So the person who's carrying, carrying, carrying my body, I'm not too heavy and I don't cause them hardship. And the reason why Sheikh Nasser said that he didn't want, he didn't want him to be placed inside a car. He wanted to avoid that. He wanted the sunnah to be followed. So they can take him to the closest. He mentions that. And he said, if it could be in the Maqbara al Qadima, which was the closest, from the closest ones, he mentioned that one specifically because it was the one burial that there was a high speculation that the people who are in it will not be brought out. <laughs> All the other burials were being changed and being used for something else. He said, don't tell anyone outside the country when I die. For my children, let alone anyone else. Except after I'm being taken to my grave or I'm being taken to my burial. The reason why is that this does not stir the people's emotions. And it plays its role in wrongdoings. And that they oppose the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that I meet him and that he has forgiven me for my sins. That which has passed and that which is to come. And he said, as for my library that I left behind, any books that are written which are published, or anything that are still manuscripts I haven't finished working because he was still writing, all of it is a gift to the University of Medina. He says, because I have, good rem I have good memories of Medina when I used to be there. When I used to call to the Kitab and the Sunnah over there. And I used to call to the methodology of the pious predecessors. The days I used to be a teacher in the university. I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, أَنْ يَفْعَ بِهَا رُوَادَهَا I ask Allah, He benefits. <laughs> he said, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He benefits.
He said, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he benefits the students who come to the jami'ah to benefit from my works. As he had benefited them from the days I used to be with them when I used to teach them. Then he concluded with the ayah, Rabbi, awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayn. وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Shaykh Nasir, he died on a Saturday when it was al thani wal al-Ashroon of Jamad al-Akhir. The year was 1420. It was in accordance to the Islamic, uh, the Gregorian calendar, 1999. And he was buried after Salat al-Isha. And the Shaykh's burial was done as he requested. It was hastened and it was made fast for two reasons. The first reason was Tanfidu Wasiyati Kama Amar. He requested for this. He asked his students and those around him to hasten his burial. So they followed his advice. And the second reason was because those days it was extremely hot. So when he died on Isha, they didn't make it reach the daytime because if it did, it would, people would burn and the heat would kill the people. And even though, though many people were not told about it, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, his burial was still large in number. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he resurrects Shaykh Nasir with the people who he works, their works he, he, he made sure that he worked for. In other words, the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah and the Ulama. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin was called after Sheikh Al-Bani died. They informed him, they said, Sheikh Rahimahullah, Sheikh Al-Bani died and this is his wasiyah. They read it on Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, that was advice. And Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said something very powerful. He said, Sheikh Nasir, he did the Sunnah when he was alive. He followed the Sunnah so much even when he was alive. And now that he died, he made sure that the sunnah was also followed uh, in the way he gets buried. And as you all know, Sheikh Nasir had a book written on how to the janazah of a Muslim. And made sure he followed each and every one of that. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude there bi Allah for today. And inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow we're going to start the kitab. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh